to be the chairman of this association, let us be able to take decisions that will move Landmark University forward. And at the end of the day, your name alone shall be glorified. Grant us wisdom. Grant us understanding. This is a prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much, sir. sir. We'll, we'll remain standing, standing for, for the national, national anthem. anthem. For the, the, sorry, sorry. We'll, we'll remain, remain standing, standing, please, for, for the, the university, university anthem. anthem. Thank you very much. You may please be seated. I'd like to establish officially the protocol and also welcome persons present at this webinar this morning. I'd like to recognize the presence of the Vice Chancellor Landmark University, Professor Adeni Olayoju. I also like to recognize and welcome the Registrar of Landmark University. Ms. Adefunke Fola Onyeloye. The Dean, School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Charity Aremu. And all other deans of colleges here present. I'd also like to also recognize the Director Landmark University Center for Research, Innovation and Discoveries, Lucret, Professor B.O. Adebesin and all other directors here present. I also like to recognize the coordinator Landmark University International Office of Linkage and Grant Management, Dr. Adeolu Adediron. I also recognize all professors present here, staff and students of Landmark University. You are most welcome. I'd like at this juncture to invite Mr. Henry Inweke to take it up from here. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor, sir, standing on the already established protocol, permit me to welcome the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Charity Aremo, for the prologue of the webinar. Round of applause. Standing on the rolled out protocols for this webinar today, I am deeply, warmly, and excitedly happy to be here this morning. I recognize Landmark University Vice Chancellor for approving that this title be presented at Landmark University Center for Research innovations and discoveries 12th webinar. I am much more excited that we have the right person for the most apt area 
of research as the facilitator. We realize that quality research and grantsmanship is a vital academic business for global relevance and purposeful institutional growth. Quality idea is a component and of course, the main thrust in research. Having the funds to carry out the quality idea is another and so very vital. Vice Chancellor Sir, research grant can be any financial or any material support ranging from a sum of money given to a researcher for all research expenses or funding of certain proportion of the research. Such certain proportion can be in form of bench work, purchase of unavailable material or equipment, school fees payment, book acquisition, and sometimes cost of thesis or dissertation final write-up. All of these come under research funding. Therefore, there are four basic types of funding and their sources. The source could be from government. The source could be from private industries. The source could be from foundations. The source could be from professional organizations. The purpose of a proposal is to sell such idea to the funding agencies that are so listed here. This means that the investigator must convince the funding agencies that one, the problem is significant and worthy of study. The technical approach is novel and likely to yield results. The investigator and his or her research team are the right group of persons to carry out and accomplish the work described in the research proposal as a forward-looking university. And of course, the School of Postgraduate Studies, we understand and appreciate the role of university facility engagement, adequacy, including instrumentations, creativity and originality of the project, and the thoughtfulness and thoroughness of the research design articulated in the research proposal and the intellectual merit of the proposed activity. In essence, meaningful research proposal should include significance of the study, the gap that is it wants to fill, methodology and approach, novelty and innovations, community impact, and of course, the record of the investigator or the investigators. Today, someone with a track record of successful proposal writing with palpable evidences of grants that are won and of course still winning is here, life and direct, however virtual, as landmark 12th Lucrid webinar facilitator. We are here therefore for a most impactful interactive seminar via the World Wide Web titled Attracting Industrial Funding, the role of the postgraduate research coming from the School of Postgraduate Studies Landmark University. My Vice Chancellor, Professor Adeni Olayonju, it's a double-edged celebration today. Today is his birthday. We will make him, we make the first presentation. He will make the first presentation and the guest facilitator confirming the hybrid interaction of Landmark. Associate Professor Angela Eni will showcase her grant acquisition prowess. Dear participants, especially my own postgraduate students. I believe that after today's deliveries, there will be intentional activities that will serve as a plowback 
of the take home from today's webinar. At this note, may we have a most rewarding time. Thank you all and remain blessed. Thank you, ma'am. Vice Chancellor, sir, to give um, the welcome address at this 12th local webinar, permit me to invite the Registrar Landmark University, Ms. Adifunke for allowing you. Thank you so much, the ME, the Vice Chancellor, sir. Please permit me to stand on the already established protocol. I'm so excited to bring a word of remark at this auspicious occasion of the 12th webinar of Landmark University's Center for Research, Innovation and Discoveries. Research funding is defined as a term generally covering any funding for scientific research in the areas of natural science, technology, and social science. The term often connotes funding obtained, please note, through a competitive process in which potential research projects are evaluated <laughs> the most promising funding. If research funding is obtained through a competitive process and only the most promising projects receive funding, haven't taken them through a process of very stringent and uncompromising evaluation as stated in the definition above, then mastery has to be gained in the art of pro proposal writing and all the other attendant paraphernalia. And to gain mastery, there is the need to undergo tutelage and mentorship from coaches and mentors who have gone ahead and have proofs to show. Here at Landmark University, we are passionately driven by our capacity building core value, and we're always eager to learn from the right sources and channels of knowledge. It is therefore not a surprise that the School of Postgraduate Studies, in collaboration with the internal national office and linkages, has gone ahead to invite a veteran in grant mastery, who is also a several times recipient of research funding, our own very dear Dr. Angela Eni of Covenant University to facilitate at this webinar themed attracting industrial funding, the role of postgraduate research. I recall the Vice Chancellor Landmark University declaring passionately during the 15th convocation ceremony of Covenant University that we know what to do because we see what you do and you here referring to Covenant University. That is exactly what we're doing here again this morning. And we want to believe that after listening to this veteran from our sister university, we will know what to do to win juicy grants and funding for contributed and value adding research works. It is on this note that I, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor, heartily welcome my own very dear sister, Dr. Angela Eni to our amazing landmark university, as well as to this auspicious event. And in the same breath, employ every one of us on this other side of the divide to fasten our seat belt as we go on this adventure of value adding knowledge. You are welcome. This morning, as it is always my privilege and honor I'd like to bring up the one that God has placed over the affairs of Landmark University in the past four years. On the 31st of July, 2021, made it exactly four years that he came on board as Vice Chancellor Landmark University. And God incidentally, today, the 12th of August, 2021, when this webinar is holding, also happens to be his birthday. A passionate driver of the Landmark University vision, daily thinking out ways by Landmark University 
we swiftly move into the limelight of global relevance. And this in consonance with one of the words declared concerning Landmark University at the groundbreaking event concerning speedy accomplishment. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we please rise, put our hands together as I bring to the podium the Vice Chancellor of Landmark University, Professor Adeni Olayoju, for his remark and presentation. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Thank you, the Registrar of Landmark University. You may all be seated. I want to specially recognize everyone that is on this platform, both on ground and then online. The protocol has been rolled out, so I will go straight to the presentation. Permit me to share my screen. Can we all see the screen? Thank you. Attracting industrial fund, the role of postgraduate research. I will be combining the opening remarks with the presentation so as to save time. The Registrar Landmark University, the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, our host, other deans of colleges and directors of centers here present. The director of Landmark University Center for Research, Innovation and Discovery, our co-host. The coordinator, International Office of Office for Linkages and Grant Management, who also double as the SDG 17 team lead. Our own guest speaker, Dr. Angela Enning. Landmark Sustainable Groups team leads and secretaries, members of this amazing university community, online and on ground participants from all walk of life, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that I warmly welcome you all to this very historic event that we once again situate properly our operation as an organization and as individuals. Do we agree with me that the theme of this webinar, attracting industrial funding, the role of postgraduate research is apt, and once again, supportive of every one of our researchers, both at faculty and postgraduate levels, who are key into the part and fat finding drive of this great university. You see those two buildings at the top of this slide? That is Senate ICT Center and Diamond ICT Centers. Those buildings are standing tall in Covenant University today, arising or emanating from the relationship or the link, linkage between academia and industry. It was Joseph Gumon that said, collaboration between academia and industry is increasingly a critical component of efficient national research system. Environment as sustained by the principle of interconnectivity. Nature does not permit isolation, taking a clue from the ecological system. Life itself is all about exchange. The collaboration between industry and university is historical and ongoing. The onus for achieving the desired link between the industry and the academia is for the stakeholders. However, there is a divining line between industry and university. If you look at the first part of the Venn diagram that we know as A and B in those days, 
Then we now have A intersection B. If you look at the A part, you have teaching, you have research, you have service, you have economic development. That's university for you. Talking about knowledge for development. However, you also see academic freedom. And we also have open discourse like we are having now. But the industry on the other hand talks about management of knowledge for what? For profit. That's why anytime they talk about teaching and research and development, I will quickly tell them, it's no longer research and development. It is research for development and for profit. So university also want to generate IGR. So we should be thinking of that aspect of it. You also see that they are also up about product R and D. Not just any research. It must be intentional. It must be focused. That's industry for you. However, we notice they have confidentiality. You get your results. They tell you cannot publish. You cannot do some things until they are true with that particular result. So there's also limited public disclosure. Then, where is the intersection? This is where we come in. And this is where the postgraduate student comes in. This is where the postgraduate school comes in. The two, the intersection between the university and the industry is that of commercialization of new and useful technologies. That is where we are here. That is why we have invited that veteran to talk to us. Because they will not give their fund anyhow, except they know that what they will get from it will be useful to them. There are several grant funding agencies. Exploring the right one makes all the difference for our research. Moreover, majority of the agency do not publish the grant funding announcement. The, most of the time, they don't. This means you have to be vigilant enough to look for one yourself. To stay abreast of the update, you shovel through the agency website every other day to catch up on the new announcement. This is the more reason we are engaging Dr. Angela Ernie from our big sister university, Convenant. She has been an award fellow since 2015, attracting grants, funding to our university, and she's here to help on how to identify with ease the sources of funding for research endeavors. This webinar, therefore, promises to be bring our way the industrial funding agency and the pros and the coins of each for the potential grantees. It is on this note that I want to welcome our dear distinguished guest speaker, Dr. Angela Eni. And to the award fellow, there is a way we greet them. We don't greet them the normal way we greet ourselves. Those in the house that are also fellow of the award, they will join me to welcome Dr. Angela Ernie by doing pacha 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 We appreciate her for the privilege to draw from her wealth of knowledge and experience via this webinar. I also want to congratulate the Dean of School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Charity Aremo, for the third webinar coming from the school to Lucrid platform, and also for the passion and the seed with which she's driving the postgraduate school, and the initiative and contribution to the actualization of our vision of becoming a world-class university. Thank you, ma'am. Of course, special thanks to our director, Landmark University Center for Research, Innovation and Discovery, our own amiable, easygoing, Professor Babatunde Olufemi Adebesi. For the way you have been mentoring our SDG team leads, the secretary and members, I wish you all a memorable webinar. Come down with us. Honestly, we are ready to do you good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning us. Numbers 10, 29B. Thank you and God bless. And straight away to business as presenter one. Nobody is reading my citation. Thank God the registrar has done that for me. Can we give it to my amiable registrar? They, they didn't ask for my own citation. 
I know they will receive citation of any. Probably they think they have known me. What of those that are online? They want to know my own pedigree. How many papers do I have in Scopus? How many citations have I attracted? How many funds? But however, the registrar has done a very good job. And so the title of the paper given to me is Positioning Landmark University. A university resources for quality assurance. Initially, it was facility. And I said it go beyond facility. We have to talk about the university resources. And so very quickly, that's God Savant, the chancellor of this great university, and the new order to us. And that talks of the university academic board, where the FIS is the chair, the university administrative board, where the registrar is the chair, and of course the university central management board that combines the function where the FIS is the chair and the registrar is the vice chair. I'm saying all of this because of what you see next. Management anywhere in the world is put in place to administer. That's administration, that's administrative in nature. Supervise the university resources towards the actualization of a tripoda mandate of teaching, research, and community impact. So you need anything in that respect, just write to the registrar straight away and put the vice chancellor in copy. What are those things that we'll be looking at? We are talking of our tripodal mandate of TRI. We are talking of student training, research, key discovery, impact, funding. We are talking of publications. We are talking of collaboration. And of course, we are talking of record keeping. And then like uh, the chairman for our strategic goal that prayed for us, Professor Oyawoye is doing, they need to monitor and evaluate whatever we are doing. So that we don't just beat about the bush and think we are getting it. So wherever we are doing it, where they, they, they clap for us. When we are not doing it, I don't think they can spank us. They call our attention to it. <laughs> Quality research. Research is central to the mission of academics. It is the quality of output from academic environment that determines the quality of development in the society. That's why they call it research and development. Outside of research, there won't be any development. Though. Look at what happened during the time of COVID-19. Until people are now able to go into their lab, carry out research is different one. They now say, well, okay, we have gotten solution. Oh, this one is uh, uh, one uh, vaccine A, vaccine B. Another one will say, this is from India. Oh, we don't want that of India. We want that of UK. We want, and that is all. Is as a result of research. So it is research for development. Of course, you know in this university, it's a specialized university of Greek. Whether we like it or not, the only language that we hear here is Greek. If you are doing political science, do political Greek. International relation, it must be to Greek. Computer science, uh, do precision Greek. Which other one? Accounting and finance, go and balance the sheet. Loss and profit, profit and loss account. Go and do it for us. Which other one? Oh, chemical engineering, all the flow. We are not going to hit chemical, but then apply the flow to solve life situation. Which other person is there? Not to talk of mechanical, help us with the machine. I agree, take care of the soil and water. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Baba. The agri people are the core. So the truth of the matter is whether you like it or not, I'm talking to the postgraduate student now. Before you graduate from Landmark University, you must solve one particular SDG goal, a problem in SDG goal, and it must be agreed related. There is a way you can draw it back. Oh, if your project is tending to some other area, quickly use your hand, direct it to agree, because there is no need establishing landmark university, because Convenant University is already doing well. It's a confessional university. The truth of the matter is, God's servant wants us to address a Greek matter. After all, he has told us many times, it's there. Food security is not an ideology. It is a necessity. To feel it otherwise can be what? Expression of insanity. And so if that is the mind of God concerning this place, you better don't move away from the mind of God. Let's key into it. But by business, do business at Greek. Hmm? Do business at Greek. Anything must be tending towards agri. So it is a new frontiers in agri, and you can see me scrolling them. Cut across crop, animal, agri extension, rural development. Then the mechanized guys will come. Agri is business, agri is entrepreneurship. So let's do it together. 
And the way we have chosen to go in Landmark University is to go global. We are thinking global. After all, we want to move Landmark to land light of what? Global relevance. And that is why we have wholly embraced the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, all the 17 of them. And also what we have done to that is we have owned that, those goals. You will see that we have repackaged the goals. The goal that was sent to us or given to the world is symbol. But we need to put picture to symbol in order for action to watch. That is why we have this other one. And of course, we have dedicated a hall to the Sustainable Development Goals Drive. And that is where we are now. What a beauty to behold. Can you beat that? This is our beautiful, can we give it to Jesus? That was in one of the Senate meetings. I just love that view. It's one of my covers on the Facebook. Now, our compelling vision. Quickly listen to this. Landmark vision plus landmark people. We give us what? World-class university status. But listen to what Jim Collins says. Great vision without great people is what? That is why we are here, to manage you, to manage us. Any management that cannot manage the people is not ready for research. So the first thing is to see how well you can manage both the human and the non-human. And when you talk of the human, you are talking of the faculty, you are talking of staff, you are talking of students. Elsewhere, they'll be talking of a different union. The truth of the matter is it has to be people oriented. And that is why we have gone that route to select 17 sustainable goal leaders and secretary. And knowing fully where, I love that picture, that no university grows without what? A people on the go. And that's why we are beckoning on you once again. Please come down with us. Don't go to verse 30. Don't say no. Come down with us. We will do the good for the Lord has spoken good concerning us. And then, even though we are thinking global, we have to start local. And the strategic plan has been handed over to us. We will just quickly look at one or two of those strategic, you know, landmark strategic goal. We call it LSG, just like SDG. Everybody by now should know the 12 of them. So if I'm going or anywhere and I meet you and I say, what is go 12? And you don't answer me, I may tell the registrar. <laughs> the truth of the matter is we have to hit it. We have to leave it. If we are driving 17 sustainable goals, why won't we drive uh, 12 strategic goals? You can't suspend something on nothing. You get it. It's only God that can suspend something or nothing. Because somebody will quickly say, what of the heart? The heart is suspended or nothing. But that's God. You are not God. Hmm? Little children, you are God. Some people are putting that too. So if you don't know where to go, what happened? Every other place will look like it. I always quickly had Google, Google it. <laughs> In the day of Google, just quickly use your Google map. It will take you there. At times, Google Map will now also misbehave. That is when you know that uh, you must rely on God. And so the landmark strategy goes at 12 in all, like the SDG people did. We also add the symbol. But we quickly said, let us also add the picture. So we move from picture to action. Welcome to Landmark University. He then revisited. Genesis 2.15 says, and the Lord God took the man, the Ems man, and put him into the garden of landmark to do us, to dress and to keep it. And that's what we have been doing in the past four years. We cannot but keep the garden and dress it. Let's go into the garden of landmark. And this is the first thing we need to do is live applicable training environment. There are standard infrastructure. We are talking of facility for our research. The first thing is already addressed in the first goal of the university. If you are talking of life applicable training environment, are you not indirectly talking about life applicable research environment? If you have a good training environment, won't you have a good research environment? Because there are buildings, they are variable, inseparable. It is the student that you teach from that, it is from the knowledge that you know that you teach the 
student. So if the equipment and all of that in the laboratory are well placed, they are functioning well, you will be training the student and at the same time you are carrying out your own research. So go one has already addressed that for us. And so we will be talking about 24-7, 365 day supply of our power. Can we give it to the proprietor base of this university? One of the challenges when it is time for us to go mm, at God's time is how are we going to survive out there? I've been living in the past four years. At times, I want to misbehave. Life will go for like five minutes. I start calling them in TPD. Forgetting where I was coming from, that TV days, you may not have light. We are so used to it here that we want to take the grace of God for granted. And so that's the first thing we should also be addressing. Because once that light goes, generator starts. Do you know how much we spend on this room? Over, 20, over 10 million on a monthly basis as a registrar. 10 million times 12 and all of that, all from the little IGR. That's why the issue of IGR also become a more serious issue that we must drive. And that can be gotten through grants. And that is what Dr. Angela will be telling us. The issue of water, the issue of internet. Now we, we realize that we have a lot of wind here. Myself and the register were just discussing. Can't we do a windmill? That's why we are trying what we are trying outside there. Once we are able to get that, we can scale it up. Let's see. And that thing will be attached to a pump that will pump water. Once it starts doing that, then we'll be using less of this. Tool. This place is well placed. This is our own abroad. Wind energy can work perfectly well in Landmark University. How many of us are keen to it? The strategic goal people are already noting it. That's the way to go. We're talking of internet. That's another big one. I don't know of your buildings or your colleges. It doesn't go. Even here in exhibition center, once you enter here at Sasama, you have access to 100% internet. I won't give you the password until you come here. When you are coming here, because this has become an hub of idea, I want people to come here on a daily basis, hourly basis, to come and be thinking. And that's the essence. We also have conducive learning environment, talking about our e-library. We have teaching and research firm, we have standard clinics. And we are doing research one, one challenge or the other. You can always take up, and that is that. First now, we talk of item seven. And all of you know that in Landmark University, our own item seven is SAS. Can you say that, SAS? Item seven in landmark is what? SAS. Don't be afraid. It's not the SAS outside. It's a departure of philosophy. Our own is Sustainable Agrarian Revolution Scheme, SAS. Give it to Jesus. So white men outside there are saying their own SAS is a casting down. For us in landmark, SAS is a good SAS. So it has to be agreed or nothing. And it must be sustainable. That's why we have to target to this uh, seven. So no wasting time. So you see now the core of this presentation is infrastructural development. So what are we saying? The perpetual base or uh, the founding father of this university has helped us. They have given us a strategic goal that we can run with. What we are discussing now, as a major thing in item nine, talking about infrastructural development. Infrastructure is no doubt critical to development for a university aspiring to a world-class status, the continuous provision and maintenance of both physical and non-physical infrastructure will distinguish it and inspire its desire to break new ground in all areas of its endeavor. Therefore, the provision of up-to-date ICT, physical infrastructure and laboratory constitute the hallmark of modernity. That's what you need for your research. You have light, you have water for those one in the lab. I love microbiology lab. Can we give it to management? The new microbiology lab should be the model. If every of those programs has each of that, that's something, and we will get there. Attract the grant. The donor wants you to use it for. So this is the, uh, as my uh, doctor photographer to go and snap that place so that I can show you. This is our uh, microbiology lab. Then we have our existing facility. I will just quickly flip through this. That's the university library. That's the teaching and research farm. 
That's the college building one. That's college building two. It's a wow. This is a wow. Engineering workshop. University Medical Center. Professors and sabbatical staff quarters. If you are doing research and you don't have a good place to lay your head, a mosquito or whatever about you, will you resume at work on the same the following day? So we have that. We are thinking even on sabbatical, we make provision for them. Then three and two bedroom staff quarters. Of course, I've spoken about uh, agrarian revolution, seven. Then we talk of community impact. A cordial relationship. Because if you don't have that, uh, this chair LSG, sir, the chair LSG, Professor Yawaye, please kindly tell Dr. Adegbite who is the chair of community impact. It goes beyond Omano. It goes beyond I'm going to see the king. It, go, it, it entails even all this bank in Landmark University now, Senate, First Bank, and all of that. We don't want all this uh, kubiku again. Can they come and do that city for us? It's a turn and, and there is a way you package yourself. Landmark is going to a level now. We are no longer baby. So by now, we should be attracting what Covenant is attracting. And that's why we are bringing them to come and tell us how they are doing it. Of course, human resources. That's another item. In the strategic, talking about human uh, development or, or, or human resource, is a whole goal. As the university is growing, there should be what? Commensurate increase in the population and capacity of staff and faculty. This obviously necessitates improved human resources management, capacity to ensure productive working environment. We're talking of research and corporate governance. As I round up, what landmark needs to do, recognize and let all staff appreciate that running a successful university lies in attracting what? External fund for cutting edge research. And that is right attitude. Don't say it's their own. Please own this thing. The priest cannot do it alone. The management cannot do it alone. All of us must embrace it. This is our own God, you know. This is what we have today. So it's not about this vice chancellor. It can go in the evening. We should build structure. So please own it. Our salary is 24 seven. COVID-19 came. One man out there are saying it's a casting down. Our pocket is saying it's a full up. So why won't you embrace such a place? That is why we are doing it with all passion. You kick us. What will come out of this will not be blood. It is landmark. It will be shouting landmark. Try. Don't even try to kill me now. Because what you'll be hearing is landmark. Amazing. So what are we saying? Sasama, even as postgraduate student, help us key into this vision. We are we are solid livelihoods uh, strategy is crucial to a start fund. Put in place appropriate structure, policy, and all of that. We are talking to ourselves now. Register is hearing. Cultivate and align activities with the need of the society. The director of Lucrid. It must be translational research. Please and please. That's why even webinar, we don't allow any webinar now. We screen our webinar right from that Lucrid stand. He knows. He doesn't address anything in agree. Don't bring it before me. We want to prove it because it must solve at least one part in our Greek for it to fly. Let's our thinking be that way now. Cultivate societal need. More than 10 of the uh, SDG, the Lucre, is a Greek in nature. More than 10 out of 17. So I won't, even if it's those are Greek ones that we face, which one is not even a Greek? Somebody will say, don't go there because they will know I will start reeling it out now. They just have to say, please don't go there because of time. I say, no poverty and all of that and all of that. You know, I won't look back because I don't memorize it. We are leaving it. Key structures needed. Thank God for Luke Reed once again. Focus must include sourcing external fraud. See, we are still listening in, in emphasis on it. Consulting units, consultancy. Somebody, the new people that came, just came here, they said, ah, and we started generating ideas from this place. That's our thinking. Because people should come. How can you have this kind of a place? 
and people will not come. Please, ask them to come and use conference and all of that, but they will pay, even though at a reduced uh, rate. The truth of the matter is, this place is becoming international every now and then. Look at that up there. We just started another one, 10th and 11th banner, to tell us that was the transition or the link, the synergy between the goals, strategic goals, and the United Nations goals. The two of them meet. That's why we put those banners there. Not for nothing. The search cluster, we have done that already. The search ethic, please, be look, please work on that. Grant management, IOL. How much of that are we doing? Let's break the gene. Let's bring serious grants to the university. Finally, use and reuse of university facilities. And I'm doing this in the voice of the director of physical planning and development in one of his presentation. He said, it is only a responsible, faithful, right and appropriate use that will culminate to what? A reuse. If you don't use it well, you can't be talking of reusing it. It is not the cost or the price value of an item that gives it what in the long term, but the appropriate use of that item that give it continuous value what? But abnormal use is what is called abuse. Abuse. The word abuse is from that compound word, abnormal use. Ab, use, abuse, misuse, inappropriate use, will ultimately lead to what? A disused state no longer in use. How do you use the facility that you even have now before we think of adding another one, even as postgraduate students? How do we use those facilities? Responsible use. Faithful use, rights use, and appropriate use. That's what we solve it. Moving landmark, university to limelight of global relevance. Let us own it. Let us embrace it. Let us run with it. O-E-R-E. -E. Once again, come down with us, and we will do you good, for the Lord has spoken good concerning us. Thank you, and God bless. A round of applause to the Vice Chancellor for such a succinct remark and uh, insightful presentation. A round of applause again for the Vice Chancellor. Shall we have our seats? The Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to uh, welcome for the citation of the guest speaker, Dr. F. E. Dada. The Vice Chancellor Landmark University, sir, the Registrar, please permit me to stand on the already established protocol as rolled out by Dr. Shola Hakomodi. A very warm welcome to our online viewers and everyone here in this auditorium. It is said that if a person's action, if one's action inspires others to want to dream more, to want to learn more and become more. Such a person is a leader. This quote rightly describes our guest speaker this morning, Dr. Angela Ubiageli Henny. Please permit me to ask Dr. Angela Ho to rise. Can we see a uh, while I take and remain standing while I take a brief citation? Dr. Angela Ubiageli Henny is a plant virologist with the Department of Biological Sciences, Covenant University, Ota, Nigeria. Prior to joining Covenant University in 2009, she spent over 10 years at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, HIATA Ibadan, and was the interim head of virology and molecular diagnostics unit of the IIT for over two years. She is currently the monitoring and evaluation officer for the Central and West African Virus Epidemiology Wave, a multinational program funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, United States of America, and the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, United Kingdom. 
in 10 African countries. She also doubles as the country director, North Central and Southwest Nigeria for the project. Dr. Henny is passionate about food security issues and collaborates with various technical experts from across the globe in her efforts to mitigate crop yield losses associated with plant viral diseases. She is a fellow of the African Women in Agricultural Research and Development, Howard, and a firm advocate for Africa to feed itself and contribute to feeding the world, giving Africa's vast agricultural potential. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, kindly join me in welcoming Dr. Angela Hoheni as she delivers a presentation on attracting funding for postgraduate research. Thank you. Thank you very much for the very warm welcome that I've received this morning. I am very excited and humbled, humbled on all sides. The Vice Chancellor of Landmark University, the Registrar of Landmark University, the Dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies, please permit me to stand on already established protocol. And let me start this morning by deeply, very deeply appreciating the university management for inviting me uh, to be a part of this great uh, webinar this morning. And again, I really am excited. The things I am hearing this morning really tickling me on all sides, you know, uh, hearing the vice chancellor, hearing that we have our own landmark development goals and looking at that picture, I would want to have that also so that I can put it on some of my uh, pages. It's just really interesting. I'm going to please uh, share my slide very quickly so that I can comment. Yes. Right. I'm my presentation this morning. Please, can we see the slide? Okay, good. The presentation this morning is uh, titled Attracting Funding for Postgraduate Research. And uh, we're going to be following this outline. And when we talk about research funding, so much had been said. Uh, the Dean of Postgraduate Students literally gave the whole presentation, which is beautiful. And uh, the Vice Chancellor just cemented all of that. Normally, the Vice Chancellor knows this. When we talk about uh, research proposal and how to get funding, it takes time. He was here with us and a couple of people from Landmark were here with us in 2018 when we tried to work through this business. So this morning, I'm just going to briefly talk about a few things and then dwell in one place. And the reason I'm going to do this is because if we can take just the one thing away, that will be nice. So there will be like a section where we are working really, and that's where we're going to dwell. We're just gonna run through quickly and then dwell on framing research questions and the research, uh, the problem tree and the objective tree. We're going to dwell there and do some exercises and see how that, what, um, what we can get out of that. So, like has been said this morning already, research funding abounds. Research funding abounds everywhere. But the vice chancellor did mention that this funding agencies never, normally do not uh, advertise. And sometimes they don't advertise in places we find them easily. Thank God the Bible says that if we seek, we will find. Therefore, you cannot 
find what you do not seek. So although the research funding abounds, we have to seek to find them. So let's have that in mind, whether it's, it be funding for uh, postgraduate research or funding for other types of researches, there are lots of funding available out there. What we're going to try to do this morning is to try and look at some of the things the funding agencies require, what is required of us, and common errors that people make and why their uh, applications are not funded. And then we're going to dwell on trying to look at the problem tree and what it helps us to do with writing our proposals. What do funders look out for? Just like individually, you know, our dreams, our passions are different. Different funders have different areas that they are interested in making contributions. So for any funder to fund a research proposal, that research proposal must be relevant. It has to bring a lot of significant contribution to that area. Significant contribution in terms of the solution that you are promising to bring or the product itself, you know, it has to be significant. Now, sometimes uh, there, there's this a, a tendency, a thing that happens a lot in Africa, in our own climes here, where we tend to do what we call incremental researches or repetitive research. If someone had done a research somewhere, we read about it and then we tweak it a little around. Those are not the kinds of researches that funders want to fund. They want to fund thing, researches that have relevance and are proposing to make significant contributions to the field in questions or to an area that the funder is passionate about making contributions to. Then secondly, the researchers look out for the track record of the investigator, the principal investigator, the co-investigator, the other collaborators that are going to be working on this proposed research. Therefore, what I say all the time, let us be mindful of the things that we put out there in this world of internet, because we can't take them down. Whatever you put out there, the only way the funders are able to appraise you is not just with the things you tell them, they cross check at the back end and their back end is on the internet. If we put publications out there that are not qualitative, they see those and those represent, it is the representation of us that they have. So the funders are looking out for the track record of the investigators that are proposing to do this research and that are asking them to fund the research. Another important thing they are looking out for is innovation. And when we talk about innovation here, we're not talking, you know, there's this question of novelty is sometimes misinterpreted. And sometimes people think novelty means it has to be something that we have never heard about. It doesn't have to be something that we have never heard about. Novelty can be an innovative way of doing something that existed before in a better, more efficient, and in these days of sustainability, more sustainable way. So whatever research we're proposing to do, we have to ensure that the solutions we're proposing have not been proposed before, have not been implemented before. Even where they have been implemented, we are adding on something innovative and clearly showing how what we're proposing trumps what existed before. And then they are looking out for your approach. Your approach here refers to the methodology, the likelihood of success. And today, this is where we're going to, we're going to try and spend in, uh, some time looking at how whether it's postgraduate research, uh, research application, uh, research grant application, or any other research application, how can we demonstrate to the funder that there is a great chance that we see already that what we are proposing will succeed? 
this is where we're going to spend time working. I don't need to talk about the next one for Landmark University. This is about fitness of the host institution to provide conducive environment to achieve research aims. Even before what I heard this morning from the vice chancellor, but much more after what I heard, I know that Landmark University is fit for purpose for any kind of research that comes in there. One note of, um, should I say caution? And this caution uh, is coming from what had happened in the past that Nigeria, Nigeria particularly is recovering from. Earlier run, research fundings that came to Nigeria, some of them were not managed properly. Back in the days when I was at IETA, um, not at IETA, but a lot in other national research uh, institutions, they were mismanaged and therefore Nigeria was blacklisted by many funders. IETA continued to receive money at those dark periods because they are an international organization and there's a way they run. But we're recovering, trust is being regained now. And so I love that I see that we already have a grants office at Landmark University because funders want to give their funding through the university. All the funding that I have ever received in Covenant comes through directly through the Covenant University. And believe me, whilst I was sitting here right now, so, uh, our admin officer came in because we sent a paper up to the vice chancellor yesterday because there's an event we have on Monday on participatory surveillance. I've received a message that said to me, they, they need from the office the participatory surveillance budget attached to our request. That is the kind of thing the funders want to see. When they come to audit, they want to be sure that the university is actually paying attention to what is going on. And normally we attach a section of the budget. Yesterday I was in a big hurry. We sent that memo without attaching it. It's not going to fly. So the institutions need to be involved in administering any funding. And the funders want to see that track record that the institution is directly involved in doing that. However, they are also interested to see that there is no delay in release of funding, that conducive environment and support is provided to the investigators. If we do that for one grant from one funder, that these funders talk to each other. And anyway, if someone else is applying to the same funder and it's from Landmark, they were like, oh, we know these people. We like the way they administer research funds. And so we're going to give it. Then, Last but not the least is on partnership. So one-sided, one-focused research does not work these days. Researchers have to be multidisciplinary. I put that in bold, is the research multidisciplinary. I put it in bold because we're going to also talk about it in the section where we're working. And then who are the people you are working with? Let's please note that these people we're working with, their track record is also very important. Vis-a-vis -vis previous publications, the quality of the publications, previous funding, how they have handled previous fundings, all of these records remain and they influence what happens. Most I'm sorry, I just realized that this line went off. I'm not sure. I'm back on. Yeah. Welcome. Okay.
uh, Registrar, Mark, can you nod if this is where I stopped? I can see yes, you on the yes, screen. Yes, yes. This is where I stopped before I went off. Okay, excellent. Right. So I was saying that we are looking at um, the requirements for preparing research proposals, what is needed. And I was just beginning to say that one of the key things that is needed is time. We have to make time to actually plan to prepare the research proposal. A rushed proposal normally will not fly. So we need to, when we see a call, it is important that we note the lifeline for that call and allocate appropriate time to work on developing the proposal. And what we have on the right here is are just common sections that most proposals would require, most funding uh, agencies will require that you provide in a proposal. It may vary, some of the terms may vary also. We have a title, which you know normally your title must be concise and reflective of what we want to do. Then we have the executive summary, which should be written last. You don't write the executive summary, you write it only after you have done everything else. And sometimes some Research funding would call for expression of interest, first of, all, first of all. And that would be something like a two page or three page, like an executive summary. Again, you don't just jump into writing an expression of interest. You actually go through drafting very brief versions of these various segments here, and then come up with that expression of interest that is a sort of executive summary of your research proposal. And then, of course, the problem statement and the specific object, uh, the objectives and the specific aims. The methodology very critical. Budget is a thing. Budget has to be detailed. You can have a wonderful proposal, but once the budget one is not within the budget that the funders want to be. Whether a lot of times some people write their research proposal and are on that. For example, the funder is saying, okay, we're willing to give our five hundred thousand dollars to ten. And then you have a research. Sorry for the echo. You have a research team put together a research proposal and they are requesting for $100,000. The funder already knows that you're not going to meet their needs. You're not going to provide the kind of impact and solution that they are looking for. Or they're saying 500,000 and then you are applying for 750,000. But that's not just all. There is a certain detail, kind of detail required for budgets. The reason why uh, from either the vice chancellor's office this morning or from the uh, financial services, I've received this paper here that says I should attach the budget. That is because the budget is so detailed. Every activity has a budget line. This is very important. And then of course the timeline. I am super excited also to hear that we have a monitoring and evaluation uh, goal in the university as part of our SDG. This is one place where a lot of uh, projects fail in our clients also because monitoring and evaluation was not a thing that we're used to. So this is very important. And you must also include a plan for disseminating the uh, information that is uh, resulting from the research, a plan of how to commercialize the product of the research a plan, you know, dissemination plan is also very important. What are some of the reasons why research proposals fail? One, the application does not fit the call. So what I normally would say is, when you, you see a call that you're interested in, when you find it, Spend an entire 
chunk of time digesting line by line what is required so that when you put your application in, we may ensure that everything that is required, the boxes are checked. In fact, if they do not have a checkbox, you must make a checkbox by reading that call. So, you know, um, detail, you read it uh, very, very well and pick out every requirement that is highlighted. And when the application, when you are submitting your application, ensure that all of those requirements are checked because thousands of applications come in and they need to be screened. Initial way of screening will be to get rid of any application that does not meet any initial requirement that was listed in the call. Then one thing that happens again here, and this is me speaking from the point where I review proposals also for some funders. One thing that happens here is that you will see some applications that have that are actually addressing the problem that the call is trying to address. However, in the narrative of this proposal, they have not linked the research they are proposing to do directly to how it solves or it applies or it links to the uh, solution that the call is seeking to address. I'll give you an example here. A, a call for increasing the income, all right, of a particular society is made. A group of researchers, tech researchers, write an excellent research proposal on how it is important to increase connectivity, internet connectivity in this society where we're trying to increase income. And they write about beautiful things on how there is even some boosters and all of that to enhance the internet connectivity. However, they do not link how availability of internet, you know, um, internet in that society then contributes to enhancing the income of the populace, the funders or the reviewers are not going to make that linkage for us. So our proposal must fit the call. Then another thing, reason why proposals get rejected sometimes is that they may lack expertise. And with this one, I feel normally very frustrated. We are not experts in everything, nobody is. However, sometimes scientists and researchers are proud or selfish, so to speak, and they do not want, you know, this is my proposal. I want to be the lead. If I bring this person in, they may take it over. Then you may come off not getting the uh, funding you're requesting because you do not have, you may have some of the expertise, but not all of it. We're going to talk about this further down. And then I've mentioned incremental research, people who propose to do one other little thing to add on to something that has been done before, but it's not innovative, but it's not significantly contributing to you know, the research field or contributing to anything new to um, what existed before. Proposals that are you know, coming like that, they get rejected. And then poorly framed problem statement was working on this and poorly prepared budget. That is in bold also because I'm reminding myself that when we get to the next session, we should look at budget as well. Um, if it's just examples so that we um, can know some of the things that uh, are required. Right, framing, uh, what I did above is just a quick summary of what, um, because I, with research proposals and research grants, I like to have some sort of hands-on kind of thing. So where I'm spending my time this morning is on framing the research problem and where we want to look at the problem tree and the objective trees. 
and how working from these two will help consolidate. If you take these two documents, I will show you the documents now, and work with them intensely and brainstorm with the appropriate team. Remember, we, we just talked about expertise. When we do that properly, then we begin to develop this proposal. The narrative would you know, be very good if this work here is done appropriately. Framing the research question is critical because that is your way of convincing the funders that you are actually addressing a need. We, it looks at causes and effect of the problem. It looks at ways, you know, of understanding the problem, best ways of approaching the problem and all that you dig in. And normally, the best way to approach a problem or manage a problem or find a solution is to dig from source. This is what I'm talking about. This is what a problem tree looks like. We're going to be working with this document this morning. For any research proposal, and it doesn't matter whether it be to industry or whether it is to our own blueprint that you are applying to, or it is to uh, development partners, this document is usually very useful. And it's a, pro a document that looks at the problem and tries to find the causes of the problem and digs even deeper to understand the underlying causes of the problem. And then looks at the top layer at the effects of the problem in the society and looks at the consequences of those effects and then the impact of those effects. Once you walk through your problem tree appropriately, it helps you, one, identify the various expertise that you require to solve the problem in question. Who are the people that can work with me? It helps you identify the specific area you want to focus and make contribution. Because take, for example, uh, low cassava productivity in Central and West African countries. This problem is multifaceted. It, it does not take one research to solve it. And so when you spend time digging through the various courses and the underlying courses, it helps you to focus and find the area where you are most suited or your team is most suited to provide solution. So what we're going to do this morning, um, I've taken a very uh, simple example for myself. And that is the low productivity of cassava in Central and West Africa. This is what uh, the project that I'm working on is uh, focused on. In West Af and Central Africa, our productivity is four times less than the productivity in Asia and in other places where cassava is produced. And we started producing cassava more than uh, earlier, much earlier than these countries. What are some of the possible problems or reasons or causes? For one, this is us now looking at the causes. We're going to walk through this document for my, uh, I'm going to take one or two examples from the work we do, and then further down, then we're going to take something that is neutral and have people actually um, make contribution if need be. Right. What are some of the causes? of low cassava productivity in Central and West Africa. It could be one, one cause is the fact that there is lack of improved um, variety or disease resistant variety of cassava. Another problem could be, or another cause could be that we do not have adequate data and adequate information on what the diseases are so that we can manage the diseases or adequate information or tools to monitor even the diseases and see whether we're making progress in managing them or not. 
that may be one problem. Another problem could be that there are government uh, lack of gov existing conducive policies that will encourage or boost cassava productivity. For example, how are the farmers getting their inputs? By input, I don't mean that we talk about uh, improved varieties and seeds on the one side here. And we've talked about diseases as a problem here. And then we're talking about inputs here. It could be inputs for, um, you know, uh, pesticides and other things that are required. It could be also access uh, to extension services and all of that. When you identify what the problems are, the causes of this low productivity, then it's usually nice to dig in a bit more. Why are we having a problem of improved variety? Is it that adequate researches are not being done? Is it that the researches are not being funded? You know, why do we not have information or why are we having problems with diseases here? Could it be that um, we don't even know the diseases that are, that are infecting cassava or where we do? Are there appropriate control measures? Are the farmers aware of what to do? Can they recognize the disease symptoms? Do they even know that there are diseases? Because some farmers think that some symptoms of viral diseases, for example, as a result of the soil, or maybe the rain did not come on time and things like that, you know? So when we dig into these underlying causes, then we come on the upside here and we see what are the effects of low cassava productivity. One, for one, we're talking about uh, food insecurity because Central and West Africa depend on cassava for food a lot. So we're talking about food insecurity here. And then we can talk about on this arm, lack of industrial raw material. Why? Because cassava has become a huge uh, industrial raw material for several industries, really. Paper industries, pharmaceutical industries, and all of that. What are the consequences? Food insecurity can lead to diseases and illnesses, can lead to um, you know, lower income because people will have to spend more to get food and all that. Once you work on your problem tree appropriately, let's get back to the causes. We found that improved seeds were not available. So a breeder would be a good person on this team. A breeder who understand how seeds, who, how, how uh, improved varieties of crops are developed. If you talk about diseases here, we're talking about pathologists. It may be a virologist, it may be a mycologist, it may be a bacteriologist, depending on what diseases of cassava the proposal chooses to address. In fact, as a virologist, for me, an entomologist becomes extra important. If I submit my proposal without mentioning an entomologist, where my viruses are transmitted by insect vectors, then I'm going to get into some trouble. You know, so what the problem tree helps us to do is to dissect the problem. And then when we write the proposal narrative, it is rich. And after you've done this and assembled the team, the team needs to come back and sit down and do this again together. Because the researcher, the principal investigator that had the idea has thought about the things they could think about. But when you bring you know, several good heads together, they would bring newer ideas. And what this brainstorming session does for you is that when you finish and different people go to write their session, different sections of this proposal, that we come together to make the proposal. Everybody is writing in tune because we have all discussed the connectivities, how the problems connect to each other, what their effects and consequences are. The narrative is going to be very rich.
And you would all have decided on the specific problem you are addressing. And so everybody would build around it. So that is the critical thing that the problem tree does for us. Just like we have the problem tree, we also have the objective tree. The problem tree helps us to write the problem statements, you know, and not just the problem statement, but the narrative in convincing why and justifying that there's a problem that needs to be funded. The objective tree helps us to link together activities that will result in required and expected outputs and outcomes and impact. So just like we did with the uh, problem tree, with the objective tree, we say, what is the purpose? What are we determining to do? And for us here is to increase cassava productivity in 10 Central and West African countries. How? How can we do that? What will be, what are the key things we need to do? What objectives would we set? As far as diseases are concerned, and I'm going to take the path on disease and break it down because I want to build on some activities. As far as diseases are concerned, one objective could be to um, develop a monitoring, uh, a disease monitoring system, a functional and sustainable disease monitoring system in these Central and West African countries and provide data, this monitoring system that will provide data that will inform disease management, right? That may be our objective. What kinds of activities will help us achieve this objective? We want to set up a sustainable monitoring system. One activity will be to set up routine surveillance, field surveys. When we set up routine surveys, maybe depending on what you are proposing, you can propose to do surveys every year or every other year. You have to describe in details how these surveys are going to be conducted, what you're going to do exactly when you go out to the field. And then the next activity would be to collect materials from the surveys, apart from you know, assessment of the fields in the surveys and looking, you know, to find the incidence and distribution of various diseases. You are bringing in also materials to be tested in the laboratories. That's another activity. And then based on the results that you're going to get, you can, for my project, we take our, another activity we do is to take, give the results from our lab results and field, uh, our lab data and the field data to a team in Cambridge University that models the disease uh, progression. What are we doing? We're trying to develop a sustainable disease monitoring system in each of these 10 Central and West African countries. And so you take one step at a time and write out specific activities that will help you achieve the objective. And when you tell the story, in the narrative, proposal narrative, you have to sequentially link how each of activity results in the expected um, meeting the objective. In this case, we call it an outcome. What the outcome that you get from undertaking the activity must fulfill the objective for which you set out to um, undertake that activity. Then up here, we're looking at outcomes. What are the kinds of outcomes that will result from this, our purpose? One outcome could be that uh, from the work we're going to do, could be that this, an early warning system is then developed for each of the countries. And this is something important because for us with cassava, there's a new virus that is in East Africa, but is not in West Africa that we need to be monitoring. 
So some of our activities will result in an early warning system being developed because we're feeding uh, modelers information that can be used in modeling. And because routine monitoring is going on, and maybe somewhere around here, extension officers and farmers and seed multipliers are being trained as part of the activities here. Then we have that a routine monitoring system has uh, an early warning system have been um, developed as an outcome. Now, when we also work on this objective tree adequately, then our methodology is nicely described in the, in the narrative. And therefore, we can demonstrate that what we are proposing can succeed. So I, I, these are the um, problem tree and the objective tree where the two places I wanted us to be able to take, uh, spend on time so that we have something that we're taking with us from this webinar today. These are two resources that any research team whether it be a postgraduate research proposal that you're trying to do, or whether it be a bigger research proposal that you're trying to write, it is important that you spend time first thinking it through by yourself, then putting together the team that you think that you require, the expertise that are required to create the solutions that you are promising to create, and you look at it again, you brainstorm on it again before you even put pen to paper, before you even begin to write anything. Once these two are done appropriately, the proposal narrative is going to be written seamlessly because the story is known, the connections are known. These are going to be done adequately. And so, having done that, I was going to, I don't know how much time I do have left. Okay. I, I don't know how much time I have left. I was... Um, um, Go ahead, Ma. Okay. okay. Yes. I wanted... So I wanted us to look at um, another problem that is not the thing I'm working on and if possible, help people think through and make contributions there. And this is a recurring problem in Nigeria, increasing incidence of cholera in Nigeria. Assuming this is a problem that we're looking to solve, you know, what are all the, some of the possible courses for this, you know, that some of the possible courses for the increasing incidence of cholera? And why do we have it recurring almost every year? Several states have cholera, you know, several people, states, in fact, this year alone, I read that some states have lost um, lives to cholera. In the 21st century, this is not something we should be talking about, but it's still happening in Nigeria. So what are some of the possible courses? And this will be for postgraduate students. I'm happy, this is, I'm wearing my teacher cap now. <laughs> I'm happy to have possible courses for the increasing incidence of cholera in Nigeria. Can this be interactive? Is it possible, please? Do we have a mic in the room? If not, I can go on. Yes. Okay. Postgraduate students are the ones I want to work with here. Uh, things we discussed earlier on. Is this possible? That's. They are here, postgraduate students. Or you want me to yeah, give? From what we discussed in the last section, what are the possible causes? And you don't have to be an expert, but we know that there's cholera in. Um, we know what cholera is. What could be some of the reasons why we're having an increasing incidence in cholera in Nigeria? 
Can I give it a shot? Yes, Professor, you can. Okay. Just to encourage them and to lead them on. We have many uh, courses. So one of them is uh, poor water source. Yes. Poor water source, potable water. Yes. yes. Thank you very so, much. Sir. So you can start now. So we can put that in this column and poor source of uh, portable water or lack of portable water. Yes, please. On clean, uh, on hygiene and environment. Okay, on hygienic environment. Can you elaborate a bit on that? That is uh, the disposal of refuse. Disposal of refuse. Poor, poor disposal of refuse. Poor disposal of refuse. That because the refuse will go into running water. Yes, uh, into yes, running water and then into uh, the underground water and defecate, people defecate in open places as well, and this can still also run, get into uh, the water source. Yes, please. One more uh, course. Indigestion of food that contain bacteria. We talked about, this is what he mentioned. He said, poor sanitary conditions. And uh, the vice chancellor talked about lack of portable water. You see, poor attitude to hygiene when people are not hygienic. When we identify some of these causes and dig a little deeper to see some of the underlying causes of the causes. Okay, sorry, my internet went off again. So I was saying things like overcrowding, poverty, and uh, you know, poor knowledge of how to maintain a hygienic environment. And now we go upward and look at uh, the effects. It leads to death, morbidity, and mortality, which would be in result. Right, sorry about that again. What I was trying to buttress really is that once we spend time working on the problem tree of incidents of cholera in Nigeria, we set out the specific objectives and the activities and walk through them in details. Then, I am so sorry. I'm not sure what is going on. This is repeatedly failing. But I'm actually almost at the end of this. Um, what I just wanted to talk about is from the activities. We build what we call activity-based budgets. Activity-based activity -based budget is where you take each activity. For example, survey. When you take a, a field survey, for example, then you're going to say how many uh, so each person then you build in the cost for the cost for uh, feeding and housing the personnel that are out there 
the cost for materials for collecting your samples, the cost for preserving your sample, the cost for your laboratory analysis. Each item has to be costed specifically. Now, when you do a budget and, and you give a lump sum in a proposal, except it is where they say expression of interest, but if it is a full proposal, detailed budget in Excel document is very important. And not just a detailed budget in Excel document, but you will then have what we call a budget narrative. And your budget narrative justifies every line item there and makes a case for why it is important. This is going, this uh, personnel would need to stay over and because the locations are far away from each other. And so they get a per diem for feeding and accommodation, right? We're buying uh, a PCR machine because of this and that, or a sequencing machine because it takes so long. Right, the, the, the internet is really so poor and I'm just gonna move on very quickly. It can be difficult and it can be frustrating, but except we seek, we will not find. And funding can come from, for postgraduate research, funding can come from this many places. I put our pocket in a small, tiny uh, circle there because we don't want to be taking money out. I'm not sure why this is happening. But these are possible research fund, uh, funding sources for postgraduate and for other types of research. And this uh, paid grants for private and foundation center, but you have others that are free, mentally funding, mentally career, you can see research. Um, Call for reset. Trust also. Uh, funds uh, postgraduate students. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation funds postgraduate funds. Uh, Fulbright also African Economic Research Consortium and the World Academy of Science. These are direct funding sources for postgraduate students. My final words will be that most postgraduate students um, would, their funding would come in form And then postgraduate students can also tap directly into their supervisor's uh, funding or leverage on their supervisor's reputation to develop their proposal jointly with their supervisors. This is a link of a presentation that was made in Covenant University during one of our executive advance, and it contains a lot of details of some of the things we've talked about today. Lots of details is online, so I'm putting that link there so that um, we can access it. Thank you so very much for listening. Thank you for the opportunity to share and be a part of this presentation.
Pacha 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 and Choba again for <laughs> Dr. Angela Eni for that detailed and illustrative presentation. For those who know how to do, let's go. Pacha 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 Choba. Thank you very much, Ma. I guess the presentation will have generated questions in our mind. So we have come to the segment of questions and answer. We'll just take a catalog of the questions and thereafter she will give answers to them. So if you have questions, kindly raise your hands as to take questions, both for persons present online and offline. All right. Oh, before we go to the question and answer sections, we have quite a number of important personalities online. I would like to take goodwill messages from them. First, I'd like to call on the Dean, School of Postgraduate Studies, Covenant University, Professor Akpan, to take his goodwill message. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am very glad to be part of this uh, presentation. My Vice Chancellor, I appreciate you. I appreciate the leadership of the university, the registrar, the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, the deans and directors. Uh, Dr. Angela, good to see you again. It's been nice having you present to our sister university. Let me note that Dr. Eni is uh, upright in covenant, and we're always happy to see her make presentations of this nature. Our funding, the salary that you are paid may not really take us to the kind of research we want to do. And so that is why there are opportunities in grantsmanship for us to take funds to do our research. And so it would be nice for the PG students, and not only the students, those of us in the academia, to be sure that we have the adequate funding to attract students to our different programs. You can imagine if you have the funding, uh, just like Dr. Eni has and uh, several others, even the issue of having students in the program will be enhanced because you don't really have what it takes for them to be enrolled on the program. I took a particular example, like uh, we have the World Bank uh, uh, funding in Covenant, and uh, they've attracted so many students into our postgraduate program because they can pay, they can uh, pay for their tuition, for their research, and things like that. So this is the way to go. And I'm happy that uh, the School of Postgraduate Studies at Landmark has taken upon itself to bring this uh, on board in collaboration with others. I I'd like to stress a particular point that Dr. Amy made, and that is about uh, timeliness. Recently, I think it was the last year, I was collaborating with about five other universities in Africa and one in Germany one institution in Germany, and we're working on an EU funding opportunity. And would you imagine one university that was supposed to have submitted our proposal, submitted barely five minutes to the, to the time that was appointed for that uh, submission. And that was how we lost out from that funding opportunity. Every other five other universities in Africa that was part of that, we lost out because of one irresponsibility or irresponsible act from one of the universities. So timeliness is key when we are talking about uh, funding. And uh, I think what Landmark has done is important because if we are ignorant of the expectations, we may not really go the, all the way out to do what is supposed to be done. So I'd like to deeply appreciate Landmark University for presenting this or making this appointment available for a PG student 
and we are trusting that uh, the funding opportunities that are available shall be taken by all of us. I want to deeply appreciate you. Thank you for this opportunity. Well done, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Greetings to my PC. <laughs> Thank, you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for the goodwill message. We'll want to ask if there are other people online that will nobody online to give goodwill message. All right. So we'll now take questions from persons present at this presentation. If you have any question, kindly raise your hands. All right. Please kindly come forward. Thank you. Please, a round of applause for him as he comes forward. Any other person who has a question can follow suit. Thank you. Kindly introduce yourself. Uh, good uh, morning, everyone. Uh, I am grateful to be here today. I'm Odeto Yorinolu from EIE department, uh, master student. Uh, I really uh, was impacted by the presentation and I just want to ask about a few things I've noticed and I'm hoping um, more light might be shed on them like there's a kind of paradox that i seem to have noticed in when it comes to the multi they mentioned the uh, multidisciplinary research but it appears that um from what i've noticed there seems to be something against it in the culture in Nigeria specifically, especially in the ICT area, the multidisciplinary aspect seems to be um, something that is still, it's not being favored. I happened to deliver a conference, uh, a presentation last year on, on the issue. So I just want to bring it to our notice again. Then another thing is the uh, dichotomy between the problems that they are trying to solve in the more industrialized nations and the local, the more pressing problems that we have here in Africa. It seems that sometimes the SDGs, because there are many SDGs and some of them are more relevant to us here than others. For example, we know of Nigeria's energy problem, I mean AIE, so um, SDG 7 is there. And in, when uh, other countries might be looking at maybe space exploration, we have our own issues here. And it's as if the, the uh, hot topics might not, especially in ICT, it might not be like that for agri because I am aware that they grow crops everywhere. They, there's research on soil science everywhere, but ICT, EIE, engineering specifically, we have that issue where um, the hot topics that might be in some of the more uh, prestigious um, journals might not necessarily be the most impactful research that might be carried out over here. And I don't know if uh, we can, if uh, the more experienced researchers can tell us what we can do about this. All right, thank you very much for your question. Do we have any other person that has a question? Or do we have persons online that would like to ask a question? No one online, all right. Dr. Angela will take from you now the response, the answer to that question. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam, and um, thanks to uh, for bringing up this uh, question. This concern, really, it's a concern you're sharing. And what I would say is, I hear you and I understand what you are saying. However, uh, with regards to hot topics in EIE not uh, necessarily being relevant in our clients, I would. 
um, should I say agree and disagree? What do I mean by that? There are lots of things that you may not be able to do by yourself independently. Yeah, I have, a, uh, I have colleagues in EIE, I have friends in EIE, and I know that through partnerships, especially for postgraduate trainings, through partnerships, they've been able to do a whole lot of things, you know. And the kinds of solution, you mentioned energy, and energy is an area where we have a lot of problems. For sustainability, for example, these days, everybody is going to alternative energy sources. That's a hot topic. Who is as blessed as tropical Africa with sunlight for solar energy? Who is as blessed as we are with wind? You know? So there are lots of things we're not able to do here, but there are lots of things we're able to do from here in partnership. The second part where I said I disagree and then I agree, the part where I agree with you is there are some things I've understood from my engineering colleagues that a lot of, um, should I say, equipment and things that are required for the production arm of a lot of the things you do are not readily available here. But for postgraduate studies, what I say to postgraduate students, by the way, is that it does not rest with your supervisor to find you know, places and people you can partner with. Please read those papers, go online, find the professors that are doing the kinds of things. Those hot topics you're talking about, the people who are working on them, identify them. You could write them emails. Speak to your supervisor about it before you do this email. Tell them the kind of things you're trying to do and how you want to partner with them. A lot of these people actually want to make contributions in Africa, but some of them do not have the link to do that. So reaching out to them could be an avenue. So postgraduate students can reach out to very senior professors and researchers out there in conjunction with their supervisor. Your supervisor may not be able to follow up on this communication, but copy your supervisor so that they are aware. If you're not sure of everything you're trying to say, run it by your supervisor before it goes. And I know students have found placements in advanced lab that gives them a boost in their researches. I hope that helps with the concern. Thank you, Ma, Dr. Eni, for the presentation and the fitting response to that question. A round of applause for our guest speaker again. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me now to uh, invite the Coordinator International Office of Linkages for the appraisal of the presentation. Uh, thank you, the Emmy, uh, Vice Chancellor, sir, the uh, Registrar Ma. Uh, permit me to adopt earlier rolled out protocols as I take on these assignments. In the opening remark and presentation made by the Vice Chancellor, Engineer Professor Denny Olayanju, talking about the synergy between collaboration within the academia and the industry. He also outlined the dividing line okay i need to take a pause and uh, there's a question online now uh, i just want associate professor angela any to help us note this i think uh, mm -hmm. you respond on to it right away Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the question is, well done to the presenter. Do we need to add someone who had won a specific grant before to our group in order to have some hope in securing grants? Some grants templates require you to fill in the already existing equipment you have to request for further help. 
How do you place such when you have none of the equipment to use on ground? Okay, this is a two part question. Do we need to add someone who had already won a specific grant before our grant uh, to our group in order to have some hope of securing grants? Um, the answer again, sorry that I keep answering yes and no. <laughs> The answer again is yes, if the person you are talking about has relevant expertise for the research proposal that you are submitting. For example, if you are submitting a research proposal on sustainable energy, for example, like um, was brought up by my our colleague from EIE, if you are bring, writing a proposal on uh, sustainable energy, and then you put my name there because I have a grant in virology, it doesn't help you, it doesn't do anything at all. However, um, the Dean of Postgraduate Studies, uh, School of Postgraduate Studies, Covenant University mentioned the, uh, Africa, the World Bank Center of Excellence that we have here at Covenant. When we were doing the proposal for that uh, uh, center, we deemed it fit to build it around, you know, existing funding and existing grants that were in the university already, because what we were proposing to do was related to some of those existing funding. As a matter of fact, I was not part of that proposal, even though I had some research grants, but other colleagues who have research grants that are related, we put them in. And yes, they will give you an added advantage, but only if they are related. That's one. And then templates requiring you to list existing equipment. If you have existing equipment, you indicate them. If you do not have existing equipment, make a compelling case for why they should get you the equipment. Like we said, make a compelling case with your proposal narrative and in demonstrating the success of what you are proposing. I am sure the laboratory where I am sitting in um, my office that is housed in a laboratory here where the project I work in is housed, every single equipment, every one equipment, and we have a standard world-class molecular virology laboratory. We can do everything to everything that you can do anywhere. But every single equipment that is in this lab, in the labs, there are actually three labs, were bought from the research funding at different times. You make a compelling case. Thank you. I hope that helps. I once again a round of applause for this beautiful and brilliant presentation by the Associate Professor Angela Toheni. Um just to continue from where I stopped, the all right. Okay, thank you so much, sir. At uh, the vice chancellor, the registrar, um, adopting all Helia Roda protocols. In the presentation of our Mibu vice chancellor, I was able to position Landmark University's resources for quality research that was carved out in the quest of his presentation. Also, he outlined the tripodia mandate of TRI as it is obtainable in Lamarck University contest. Also, he explores the, front, the new frontiers in research with respect to Lamarck University drive for agrarian revolution. Also, he stated the 17 SDG as postulated by the United Nations and as domicile in Lamarck University. He gave two equations. Equation one was that Lamarck University vision plus Lamarck University people equals world-class university status. 
Equation two was actually accredited to Jim Collins that great vision minus great people is equal to irrelevant. And that Landmark University strategic plan for 2017, 2020 was also projected. And he also stated that we have moved from picture to action. He also stated the SDG 7 as contained, SDG 7 and SDG 6 as contained in the Lamarck strategic plan. In conclusion, he noted that there must be cutting edge research, consulting units, research ethics, talking about research committee and slash unit, grant management unit, and the use and reuse of university facility. In the presentation of Associate Professor Angela Ho Eni, attracting funding for postgraduate research, it was well brought forth that the funders, they look out for number one, the significance of your work. They look at a track record of the investigator. They look at innovation, the approach, environment, and partnerships. All these are components that the founders actually look out for. Through a brilliant presentation also, she dived into essential component in proposal writing, talking about the title, the executive summary, the problem statement, the objective, the aim, and the methodology, as well as budget and timeline, as well as monitoring plan and the dissemination plan. These are essential components in the proposal writing. She also said that we need quality time for proposal writing. Also, she projected the reasons why proposals get rejected. Talking about application that do not fit the core. Also talking about lack of expertise, incremental research, poorly framed program statements, poorly prepared budget. She also outlined the problem tree. In this problem tree, we have causes and effects as part of the essential branches in the problem tree. Also, she outlined the objective tree, talking about the goals, the impacts, the outcomes, purpose, objective, activities, are key components of the tree. She made a case study to cassava productivity in 10 Central and West African countries by 2030. She also, there were some reflections. The reflections were also offered on the causes of cholera in Nigeria. To this, postgraduate student actually reacted accordingly. In the light of the foregoing, I'll quickly highlight in bullets the summary of the principal observations made during the two presentations. The one, use and reuse of university facilities. Two, the landmark strategic plan from 2017 to 2022. Three, quality time is essential for proposal writing. Number four there, we should reflect on problem tree as well as the objective tree. Number five there, there should be detailed budget in exact format when applying for, for funding. And last on the list, the PG students can make proposal submission along with their supervisors. Once again, the Vice Chancellor, Registrar, thank you for the platform provided. Thank you very much for the succinct um, presentation or the appraisal of the two presentations we have had thus far. The seminar permits me at this juncture to invite the Vice Chancellor of Landmark University, Professor Adeni Olayoju, for the closing remarks. A round of applause, please, for the Vice Chancellor. You're welcome, sir. You may please be seated. Thank you, our HEMHE and the SDG5 team lead. In fact, in Landmark University today, the gender, 
they are really taking charge. The female gender are all over the place. I counted the number of uh, females in the newly inaugurated LUSC, and they are like 75%. So women are really, can we give it to our women? So gender is being uh, equal in Landmark University. Once again, we want to appreciate Dr. Angela Erni. Uh, you reminded us of the year 2018, and then most of the things that we are seeing today as a, as a result of that training. I want to say that uh, all that you have taken us through, we, the young minds, we are going to run with it. Because honestly, I believe in walking the talk. There is no need spending quality time here, and then we just go away like that. So we will be asking the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies to really help us drive this alongside the postgraduate uh, student. Uh, myself at DSPS, we were just talking that how uh, oh, we wish that uh, my PC, Professor Adebayo Abiodun, will release Dr. Angela, like a, a whole session, let her come and do, uh, not really sabbatica, but transfer. <laughs> let her come and stay with us for a year. But while we are still going to be driving that, at least we can have her for like three days workshop or training on ground. So if you will oblige us, once you are back in the country, this that you are, because of the internet uh, challenge, we are really following you. And we would like to develop at least one, two, three proposals arising from this, so that we can always say that uh, we, so that we can link it to this particular webinar. Honestly, I want to say our time is being well spent. We have been refreshed. We have been imparted. Landmark University indeed is going to benefit from this. And like I always say, every move of God, move an individual forward. As we are trying to take Landmark University to limelight, you can be readily assured that you yourself, you will move to limelight of global relevance. Our feasibility, citation and all of that will be increased or improved on as a result of this webinar series that we are doing. Once again, we appreciate everyone that has been part of this. The registrar especially for staying true. I want to appeal to our faculty and staff. All these webinar series are not just for departments or colleges organizing them. That is why the university is taking them up under Lucrid. If we plan to be part of this, you can be readily assured as we have embedded in our core value of capacity building, you'll be so surprised at the end of the session, the person, the you that we emerge from what we are doing now. Honestly, the me that came here in 2017, it's not me that is standing now, and much more. It's not me that will be living when the time comes. The capacity indeed is daily improved on. So please, when we have this kind of opportunity, we can plan, and that's why we are at time we, we share it like a week or two ahead of time, so that individual can plan their time. So let us be part and parcel of this. Most is also online. So who says we cannot also join from our various uh, platform? It's on this note that I want to thank everyone. And I know for sure that Landmark University is going to seriously benefit from this. Once again, thank you and God bless. Thank you, sir. The Vice Chancellor, sir, the Registrar Landmark University, seated here in this auditorium are some uh, postgraduate students and joining us virtually, a lot of our postgraduate students here in Landmark University. And to give a vote of thanks on behalf of these students is a joy or ladapo. Step forward. Um, the Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, Permit me to stand on the already established protocol. It's a privilege for me on behalf of all postgraduate students of Landmark University to give this vote of thanks. Um, we want to appreciate the management of Landmark University 
for making this 12th Lucrid webinar a reality. Also, a special thanks to the Center for Research, Innovation and Discovery and the International Office of Linkages and Grant Management. Thank you very much for the privilege. I also want to appreciate our Dean and the entire staff of School of Postgraduates of Landmark University for all you do for us. Thank you, Ma, and thank you all. And also, I would like to thank all our uh, Dean of Colleges that are present. Thank you very much for coming. And also, I would like to thank um, Dr. Angela Eni. Thank you for your insightful presentation. We appreciate you. Uh, as Landmark postgraduate students, uh, we are all living here today more knowledgeable and about how to attract research funding. Thank you and God bless you all. We have gladly come to the end of this 12th Lucrid webinar and we appreciate God. It's been awesome, awesome. And we say kudos to the School of Postgraduate Studies in collaboration with the International Office of Linkages and Grant Management. And kudos to everyone who have been patient and the good Lord will continue to bless us. Permit me now to invite for the closing prayer, Dr. Marion Adebi. Please put your hands together for her as she comes forward. Shall we all rise for prayers, please? Thank you. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for the glorious program. Thank you for bringing us success, even in completing this program. Father, we are grateful to you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the speakers. Thank you for helping them, Lord, to dish out even the content with wisdom from our book. Father, we have learned again. Jesus, we ask that the purpose shall be accomplished in the name of Jesus. Father, the purpose, Lord, is to attract industrial funding for postgraduate research. Father, in heaven, as an institution and as postgraduate students of this great institution, Lord, we ask that you will help us to successfully plunge into the pool of opportunities, Father, in heaven, and explore them gloriously in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that at the end, Lord, um, testimonies will abound and we will return all the glory to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Father, go with us as we depart from this place and let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall be in the presence of you forevermore. Amen. Please hold on. We are not um, wrapping up yet. Well, this is a little coffee, wow. a little wow. um, cool mm -hmm. for the vice chancellor of Landmark University. We just want to crave your indulgence as we. Sing the birthday song for the Vice Chancellor of Landmark University and request that he cuts his cake. I think he has another one there. That's from the alumni. Beautiful. Wow. Wow, indeed. Uh. <laughs> I'm so excited because I'll eat plenty cake. And you know, I love cake. <laughs> this is Landmark University color. Okay. <laughs> 
I think I'll not, um, want to request Professor Aremu to anchor this, this part of this as swiftly as we can. Glory to God. Uh, what a privilege. No, we've, after yours, sir. We, we, we are in charge now, sir. We are here this afternoon celebrating a passionate man, a man with a focus, a man that is vision driven, a man that will abhor distraction, a man that is here to deliver the mandate, a man that is here driving the vision onto that global relevance. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you will agree with me the landmark is privileged to have one yes. professor, Adeni Tajudin, permit me to call that name, sir, <laughs> or Lionju, as he celebrates another milestone in the service of Landmark University. We are grateful, sir. We are excited, sir. And we thank the God of Bishop David Olani Oyedeko for bringing you the way of landmark. You are indeed the Augustine of landmark. We celebrate you today. Congratulations, Vice Chancellor Landmark University. And so on this note, okay, he's going to cut the cake and we are going to call the name Jesus. Okay, ma. <laughs> okay. So we are going to use the name as directed. I'm going to use the name the Glory. Glory. Yeah. And we are going to spell the name. Is there anyone to watch his cutting of this cake? Okay. All right, ma. So we go. G. G. L. L. O. O. R. R. Letter R. R. Y. Hallelujah. And so please take his personal now. Then we call out the deans and the um, directors here present to join us. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> okay, so hold this very well. Okay, so a person and now. Sorry, sir. Okay. Okay. <laughs> alumnus, an alumnus of Landmark by virtue of, okay, it's my dear. It's my dear. So the vice chancellor and the registrar only. Then please let's move closer. No, the vice chancellor and the registrar only. All right, ma. Thank you. The deans and directors of colleges. Okay, the deans, the deans, directors, please, professors. Let's make it snappy. Yes, sir. Chairman.
No, 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 I'm here. I said everything. Thank you. 
Happy birthday, sir. That day is a special day to celebrate the gift of life and the gift of men. You have been a gift to us. And your passion and your sense of commitment is worthy of emulation. On this special day of yours, and on behalf of all Pathfinders, we wish you greater years ahead. Happy birthday to our amiable Vice Chancellor, Landmark Alumni.